Welcome everyone. It's Google season of Docs office hours, the 2nd of November, 2020. So Zenab, I've I got pull requests, blog post PR, and next steps as topics on the agenda. What would you like to put on the agenda? Um, I think the only the updates I have. Um, okay, I'd like to talk about running a uh, make run on Windows. So um, in the last meeting we had, um, you suggested cloning the repository um, on Linux. I did that, but I still encountered an error. And okay, good. So that's yeah. that feels like a good agenda topic. Any any other topics you'd like to add on the agenda? Then also, um, there are some some comments on the PR. Oleg dropped some comments on the blog post PR and the Jenkins operator PR. So I'll look into them before I'll work on them before the next meeting. So. You say there are also on Jenkins operator? Yes. All right, great. All right. Any other topics? Or from Kristen or from Marky? Yeah, couldn't unmute fast enough. Uh, I have nothing. Okay. All right, then let's go ahead and we'll just run the agenda then. Pull request. So we've got the skeleton PR, which I assume is the one that, yes, Oleg merged this last week. Sorry that we hadn't merged it sooner, but that's great. And so it's in and ready to ready to fill in with pieces. Then the PR for Jenkins operator. I believe it's still in progress. Kristen, you've done some review on it and made comments. We've got comments also from Bibav and from Marky. Good. So what I what I would like, uh, Zinab, if it's possible. Once this PR is ready to go, like everybody has said that they approve it and everything, I would like if you could uh, squash commit to bring all of these commits down into one. And that can sometimes be a, a little difficult, but if you need help, please let me know. I will be more than happy to help you do that. Essentially, Hello. go ahead. There is a, the, the label squash merge me has been applied. And so the person who merges it can just do that squash directly. Beautiful. So that, so that Zenob doesn't have to. Zenob, I assume you're okay if we squash merge it. That will yes, what I it will am. do is collapse all the commits into a single commit, and and then. Okay. All right. So this is a don't forget to squash merge. Whoever merges it. And Marky, you've got merge permission on that repository. I've got merge permission. And I know Oleg has merge permission. Kristen, do you have merge permission to the Jenkins.io site? You know, I'm not sure. So probably not. If, if yeah. it's not immediately apparent to you, probably not. So just, right. just, we just have to remember that the label has been applied. Now we need to honor the label and actually do the squash merge. That avoids you having to do it, and it lets you still, Zenob, continue this the pattern of small commits that you use. I like that pattern; it's very healthy. 
Thank you. Okay. Great. Anything else on those pull requests or are there other pull requests that should be in the list? Yeah, I see three, so I think we had so Okay, the yes. Oh, sampled um, YAML files, right. Files, yes. Okay. And there, the, there was a recommendation from, um, from Tim, Tim Jacome, right? I wasn't quite sure what to do with his recommendation. Um, so, Zinov, do you have some concept of how you, what we might do there? I didn't, it wasn't clear to me. His suggestion was suggested that um, the authoritative repository was a better choice, that the, the upstream, uh, help me understand better. Okay. So let's see if I can find his comments on inside. So I think his comments had um, something to do with maintenance. Right, but it wasn't in this. Maintaining right? and updating. Oh. Yes, it's on Jenkins operator. Okay, so it was somewhere in here. Ah, here we go. So his concern was this. Let's make that big enough to actually read. So, so do I understand his concern correctly that he's worried that by using the, oh, go ahead. So I think his worry is um, by putting this file in the Jenkins.io repository, no one is going to maintain it when it gets updated on the official repository. It's going to probably be, it's going to be probably difficult to track changes to the official repository if we replicate the file here. Is it possible, and I'm just, thinking out loud here, is it, uh, Zenop, this is going in the official repository, correct? As well as in the document. No, this is only in the documentation. Oh, okay. I, I see. So, you know, in, in this um, snippet here, I was using the file from the official repository, but um, Oleg mentioned that it might be a problem if, um, the master branch of the office, um, official repository is renamed. So I suggested probably replicating the file and putting it on Jenkins.io so we can have control over more control over that. But Timja is raising the um, suggestion that if we should do that, that if we should replicate the file on Jenkins.io, we might not be able to track um, properly track changes to the official the file on the official repository. So if say for instance they made changes to the file in the um, official repository, we might not know immediately to update the one we have on Jenkins.io. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. That's a lot more clear to me. I could I agree with that. However, I would wonder if it would be possible to put a comment on the official repository that there is some linkage to this document. And if there's any changes made there, they would need to also be reflected in here. That way the person that we're making the changes would know that. And that's just a, a possible thinking out loud suggestion. Okay. So this, this is the repository that 
that is the, the authoritative repository, right? Oh, uh, so yeah, there's there's actually even more now now that I've, it's all coming to back to me to my fuzzy mind, my COVID brain as I call it. Uh, so so one. so in but but Zenop, what you did was you referenced exactly deploy CRDs Jenkins. So deploy yes. CRDs. Jenkins, oops. Okay, and I don't see that as a. Oh, it it does it. I I'm not sure how does this cube cuddle command you, resolve it. Yes, yes, that will resolve it. There's a there's a hidden link in GitHub that you're able to use the Gitbuster hidden links, uh, where you can pull down the raw content of that okay uh, but my concern now is now i understand what oleg and tim are saying and because of this repo in particular i would be yeah this is sort of a touchy catchy one right here can you go mark can you go back to the pull request uh -huh. Is there, would it be better to try to like version this? Like, is there, I don't know if the Jenkins, or sorry, if the Coop, yeah, the Jenkins operator is going to have, you know, versions. I was like, maybe that would be easier instead of pointing to. Well, I think the, I think Tim's concern is specifically to the operator and whom control, I don't want to use the word controls the operator. Uh, the code based okay. there's like a big there's a big thing sort of happening with people getting in and, and being able to become maintainers of this what i would suggest and this is a more official suggestion is xenop i would leave line 593 as is but i would add a comment in there that this is subject to change and it's mm. best to verify like the repo to be safe. Okay. That, that I mean, what do you think, Mark? That that sounds okay to me. I'm actually a little concerned that I think that this link right now is actually broken. And so I think it's gonna be need to be revised anyway. And I don't know when the change was applied that caused it to become broken because it's not that these files have changed recently. Yes. But at least I was expecting that when I opened this URL in a web browser page that it would not 404. Yeah, you would actually get the raw. So that link is broken. So Xenop, that has to be corrected. And while you're correcting that, I would I would add a comment in there uh, for in that 593. I would add a comment that basically says this repo is subject to change or this link is subject to change and it would be okay. best to verify that would be my recommendation okay would this be another good instance of something that we would have like because i know that um for the getting started guide we have our place inside of um jenkins io with a whole bunch of say like in the files because when people you know people don't copy would it be having something like a copy of this file or something in case of problems? I've seen, I've seen people do that. I think the only, uh, I think I've seen people do that, but I've also seen it become problematic because yeah. there's multiple places to update and somebody forgets that one special place. Yes, that's the one thing I hate, but I was like, just in case. Yeah. In a situation where it's like... <laughs> I'm like, wait, you didn't tell me about that third yeah. special place. You only gave me the first one. <laughs> Uh, I, I just think it would be good just to make a comment in the code that this 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 link is subject to change based on maintainers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so the so Tim's Tim's phrasing here apply these official deploy instructions in the official repo. Yeah, so so I think Tim's actually objecting to the idea of putting examples in this repo if they're 
conceptually too close to the production, ex to the real examples in the, or the, the data in the repository. So he's, I think he's buying us towards not do, placing examples in the repo unless they are somehow trivial or completely dis, disjoint. Am I misreading his comment? I think this has, so just for the record of why this may be a bit of a, I think what I think Tim is bringing up and also Oleg is uh, the maintainers of this repo in particular, there's been some, uh, there's been, people have raised uh, not being able to become maintainers of this, specifically uh, Red Hat. And my, I think what the fear is, is that something will change in this, we will not know or have any way to affect correcting something. And we're kind of at the mercy of the maintainers of this operator. And I think that's what Tim is trying to avoid as well as Oleg. I could be completely wrong. So I'm not speaking that they've actually told me that I'm speaking just sort of guessing, but knowing some of the history with this particular uh, repository. Okay. Thanks for the insights. So then do we have, it feels like what what we're recommending then is that Xenop stays with a reference to the to the authoritative repository and corrects this URL. Is that okay with you, Xenop? Yes, yes. Okay, because I think that would address Tim's concern. It doesn't really address the concern that started us down this path from Kristen and I think from Oleg that, hey, we need a place to put examples that are bigger than will comfortably fit in line in the documentation. Yeah, cutting and pasting. I like Kristen's example from a week ago, cutting and pasting more than a page of text is problematic and error prone. Okay, yeah. great. I just think one more, one more thing that just should be captured is to, oh, you actually did capture it, Mark, thank you. And include a comment warning that this will need to be confirmed it works periodically. Yeah, I would just right. put something around those lines, Zena. Okay. All right. Is has that settled that question then that we've we've addressed the sample yes, YAML Excellent. Okay. Right. Discussed and included and talked. Okay. All right. So running make run on Windows to see the Jenkins IO site. Zinab, help us understand. Um, so I was able to clone the repository and I tried running make run. I was getting a different error from the previous one. Um, I've not been able to access my PC. Once I'm able to do that, I'll copy the error and send it on GitHub so we can discuss it there before the next meeting. Great. And you're running Windows 10, right? But you're running Windows 10 yes. and WSL 1, not yes. WSL 2. Okay. Yes. Right. And I apologize. I still have the action item. Oh, whoops, wrong window. I still have the action item. Try Windows 10 and WSL 1. My primary workstation is now WSL 2, but I think I've got an older computer that's still got WSL 1 on it. Anything else? Nothing else. Okay. Next topic then was the blog post. And oh, that's the, we've got the PR for the blog post as well, right? And it is here. 
And Zenob, I assume that you're okay if we post this anytime, right? So you're okay if I adjust the date on this and if we were to post it today or tomorrow, you'd be all right with that. Yes. Super. My apologies that I'm behind schedule. I didn't I I did not get married last weekend and still I'm behind schedule. Oh, and one of the things that we've been taking as a, a specific action for our blog posts to increase their impact is that we're creating a social media post for them. So a Twitter, Twitter uh, so a tweet and a LinkedIn. If you've got content you would like to recommend to be in the tweet, um, you're welcome to submit it. You'll see those in the social media channel, in the advocacy and outreach channel on Gitter. Great. Okay. Anything else on the blog post? Nothing. Okay. Next step. So we are now. Um, it's we're now. A, to November and we've got until I believe five December. So we've got about a month remaining. Do you want to share with us some of the things you envision happening, Zinab? And um so once I'm done with all the changes on this um to the PRs, I want to start working on administering um sentence on Kubernetes. Um some Yes, so I want to see if I can cover that and also cover um, something on cloud also before then. Excellent. Oh, oh, and I wanted to show you something actually while we're while we're here because I just merged something last week. Uh, Jenkins on IBM Cloud tutorial is now merged. And it's with Kubernetes. So your timing is great. We've got something. Wow, to yes. Show it to you, Jenkins. Tutorials. And this came from, I think, someone that's a contractor to IBM or something like that. But here's this page with screenshots of how you do a provisioning on IBM Cloud using using Jenkins. Yeah. So your timing to want to do public cloud is really great. We also have on the downloads page of uh, this thing which is links to documentation from vendors on their public cloud deployment techniques. And almost all of them are in fact Kubernetes. Google, IBM are both absolutely Kubernetes. Uh, I don't recall on AWS and Azure. That's excellent, Zina. Anything else that you'd like to share, though? Those already feel like um, large undertakings and interesting challenges. Now, will administering, for instance, include how to deal with configuration as code in a Kubernetes environment? What what sorts of things are you envisioning there? Yes. Um, configuration as um, code scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes. Um, so, um, I don't have my notes with me right now. I'm actually using my mobile phone. I've not been able to access my laptop. So. Well, and thank you for joining us from your mobile phone. That's impressive. 
Well done. Thank you. All right, any other topics we need to cover today? Nothing for me. All right, thanks everybody. I will post the recording. Thanks very much.